call the wonderful member from Mount Waverley. Thank you, wonderful acting speaker. Uh, I rise to speak on the Road Safety and Other Legislation Amendment Bill 2019. And uh, thank you to uh, all my previous colleagues for their excellent contributions. Um, we all use and rely upon our roads every day to get us from A to B, whether it be commercial, public, private use, we all share our roads. And we should be able to expect that all of us on the roads obey the rules of those roads. Now, for minor discretions, which I'm sure most of us have, have done, fines are appropriate and we should behave ourselves. But for serious offences, our community expects tougher treatment. Um, it's very pleasing to me to see that this bill will ensure that the very small percentage of our road users who ignore or forget their responsibilities and are danger to all of us on the roads are treated with the severity of response that our community expects. Last year was a devastating year on Victorian roads and so it's good to see that we are once again giving our police the resources they need. We rely upon the safety of our roads to ensure the safety of our families and our community. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the Minister for Police and Emergency Services on the significant work that has been done to take those who put uh, members of our community at risk off the roads. I'd also take the opportunity to thank the Minister for Roads and Road Safety in TAC and the other place for her important work in this area. And once again, in regard to the TAC, a nod to the Honourable John Kane and uh, his thankful work in that area for bringing it in. The government's 2019-2020 community safety uh, statement has set five priorities to make Victoria safer. These five priorities can be seen in this bill mostly in the three areas of reducing harm, putting victims first and holding offenders to account. And any member of our community who thinks or most likely doesn't think but commits excessive speeding offences or other serious road offences or injury with a motor vehicle or murder with a motor vehicle, their licence will be immediately suspended and they'll be off the road as they should be. Now, the Minister mentioned two individuals in her speech, Chloe Dickman and Jane L. Dean Hayes, for their dedication to these changes and I also thank them for their advocacy. I think it's worth pointing out that every individual on our road has a family, friends, workmates. And last year we lost 266 people and the TAC figure on the website is actually reported as lives lost. I think any of us who saw the horrific tragedy in New South Wales last weekend could not be moved by the senseless loss of life for those families. I have three children and I couldn't even begin to imagine the depth of loss that that family is dealing with right now. So I think as well as thinking about lives lost, we should also think about lives changed forever. I can remember in 1996, I was driving to work, I was working at BHP at the time, and hearing on the radio, um, I was listening about Melbourne and Hawthorne merging, which I wasn't happy about as an avid Hawks fan. Um, and uh, over the radio came an announcement that a, a driver in Frankston, uh, there was an accident, he'd gone through an intersection, straight into a petrol station, hit a combi van, squashed the man who was filling up his petrol bowser at the time between the combi van and the petrol bowser. Immediately that blew up and the driver was killed instantly. Now I remember that like it's yesterday because I remember thinking at the time, waiting, for my, waiting to park, my cousin lives in Frankston and he drives a combi van and I just had a sense that it was him. And it was one, you know, one of those feelings you get where you just think something's happened and it, you think, no, 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 it's just silly, silly. So I, I parked the car, it took a little while, and it kept nagging at me and I just thought, look, I've got, to, I've got to check, I've got to get it off my mind. I rang my mother, his auntie, and she answered the phone and she was in tears. So my cousin, David Bryce, died 
on our roads. He wasn't even on the road. He was at a petrol station. Now, I don't, I don't know if the driver that crossed that intersection and went into that petrol station, I don't know if he was speeding, I don't know if he ran the red light, I don't know if he was drunk or on drugs, I, I don't know and I don't want to know because it would, if those things turned out to be true, it would make it worse. But I would, what I would want to know is that that driver who caused that mayhem, that grief, that permanent sorrow in the family of my cousins and my auntie, I would want to know that they don't have their licence that moment. And that's what this bill does. I commend the bill to the House.